I would just like to invite you into the silence to sit within the sacred space that resides within you as we connect in oneness with the ever-loving divine spirit known as God, however you perceive your God to be. As I now lead you to open this service in prayer. Divine and infinite spirit, you are the light and power of all life and creation within and around us that lives and moves through all things. We come to you in prayer and thanksgiving. We pray for all those in need. May our united thoughts give the strength and healing wherever that intervention is needed the most and that those in need may feel your presence and that within the darkness and uncertainty in the world at this time, your light, reassurance and love is truly known. As we gather here today in service, we acknowledge the limitless and miraculous power that you are and that this service is held and inspired by your love. As we open this service in celebration of all life, herein and hereafter, in true honour and gratitude. Amen. today has been taken from the Rotten Stall Spiritualist Centre Songbook, number 66. It's actually a hymn from the original hymn, Be Thou My Vision. It's been adapted to a spiritualist hymn by Christina Collinge and myself, Adam Berry, and renamed Be My Clear Vision. Be my clear vision, pour light in my heart. Be always close by me, be never apart. Guide my thoughts and actions by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence, your light. You are my wisdom and you are my truth. You're ever with me and you will me soothe. You, the great spirit, with your love I try to show through my daily life that we never can die. Riches I need not, nor man's empty praise. 
you're my inheritance, now and always. God, the Great Spirit, lives here in my soul, shining through my life. Your light is my goal. I'd like to begin by reading just a very brief extract from an old Lyceum manual and it's titled The Teacher's True Starting Point and so it follows The human soul is the product of an infinitely wise and good father and that there is in every nature an immortal spark of holiness the life of everything is love. But the form, the shape in which that love appears, is determined by wisdom. The impulse to look up toward heaven is as natural as the beating of the heart. And so certainly, when we consider that God, the Creator, true our first principle, is present within every living thing. Every braid of grass, bush, bird and tree, every ocean, river, waterway, everything is created in love by God and that humanity coalesces in that creation and everything is as much a part of it as we are and certainly particularly in the last week or so it can appear that we are far from that, far, far from the Creator. That there is a sense of godlessness in the world at present. But that's a perception filtered through the media, through the world around us as people struggle to come to terms with their reality, which can quite often be painful. Sometimes that pain of humanity and circumstance can be too difficult a burden to bear. And that results in a lashing out in confrontation. But if we can recognize and go within, I think that is where the greatest work is done as spiritualists. When I became a spiritualist, my passion and belief, this sense of homecoming that I had finally found a place where everything about my life had made sense. This sense of come ho homecoming. And I wanted everybody that I interacted with to be a part of that. This fervor to tell them about this belief system that I had, you know, fell into and everything just fitted. All my life had been a journey to that point and I wanted everybody to be on that journey with me. But as I moved toward spiritualism, through it, and really begun to understand it more and more, that I recognized that the greatest work is done 
within. And the recognition of that still divine spark within me and the subtlety of that power that really gave me an understanding that we don't have to go into the world shouting and screaming about our beliefs, but that we can affect great and everlasting change in a still small way, but a very profound way. Because in recognizing that divine creator within, that is part of me and part of the world around me, that I am enabled to recognize the creator and that divine within in all living things. And I can see in a very small, strong and centered way that those individuals, however difficult their circumstance, however different they may be in belief, manner and opinion to me, are also part of that creator. And I don't have to challenge their beliefs, their politics, their thoughts, their presence, but that I can recognize in them that spark of humanity. And in that very subtle way, enable them, quite often without the need for words, to know that they are loved, to know that they belong, and to know that they are valued. And I think that is one of the greatest marks of our movement through our first principle, is that recognition that we are all part of something greater. All part, part of that divine spark of humanity whose body nature is and God its soul. Spiritualism is a very powerful movement and certainly in these last few weeks where we have been forced to isolate, disconnect, the beauty of going within, the peace and serenity of knowing that God is within me, that God is within everything. And that surrendering of that need to control and handing it over to trust because things will work out in the way that they are meant to. That is the greatest power of our first principle, of our movement, of our beliefs, that we are connected and that we are held in the hands of the divine. We just have to release our ego, our need to control, to dictate, to collect and trust. Just trust. Because if God is in every blade of grass, every flower, bird and tree, that I have a need to be here. I have a purpose, and so do you. And trusting that purpose, because God created us for a reason, that brings comfort, it brings peace. And if many of us could do that, 
in a very small, small, still way, we could really affect lasting change in the community. How powerful would our lives be if we gave up that need to collect or to control? If we trusted that things would just work out? If we listened to what has been said within? If we listened and heard rather than listen with a need to reply? How powerful that of all of the millions of people in the world that we are here. How powerful out of all of the circumstances, all of those millions and millions of circumstances that could affect our arrival and yet we are here. We are loved. And we reflect love. We are beacons of light to bring people home. Not home to a place, but to a sense of being, to a sense of self worth, to a sense of recognition that they too are created in light, in love that they too have power and purpose, that they too have meaning and value, and that they too are loved. And nothing is greater than the love of spirit. Nothing is greater than the love of our Divine Father. We are here to experience life, to affect change in a small, still and quiet way. We don't have to go out passionately beating down doors and ex explaining to people that ours is the true way. But what we can do is be the best version of ourselves. And true example, true subtle and serene movement and affection show people that they too are loved and valued and belong. That is the beauty of spiritualism. And so, in the days and weeks, as things continue to unfold in the world around us, release them. Give up our need to control them. Give up our need to hold on to the fear and anxiety and trust that we have a pathway and a plan, that we are held in it and on it by a creator who loves us that we are loved in a very real and tangible way and that we bring love into every interaction. That is the message of spiritualism. That is the movement that brings us, that ties us, that love which transcends all boundaries, which transcends the event known as death. Love lasts forever. And love is within us all. Thank you.
Just in 